Michael, I've got some great news, buddy. What's the news? <laughs> Dude, you can't say it like that. <laughs> oh, man. No, I no, just threw him off all day. You did. We. Uh, it's fine. I was going to say I lowered my cholesterol through diet and extra exercise. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. There you go. Thank you. It's doable. You know, high cholesterol runs in my family. Yeah. And I was able to defeat it in my early 30s through diet and self-control. Boom. Boom. Good now, news. how long is that going to last? Not sure because I've been eating a lot of leafy greens. And I'll be honest with you, oh, boy, it's hard. I believe that. Yeah. Sometimes I just grab like literally a handful of spinach and I'll just like shove it down my throat. That's like the first part of my meal I'll eat. Like knowing, a, ra like a wow. rabbit? Exactly like a rat, like a starving rabbit. And I don't, I don't look happy doing it. I have a grump, I have a, I have a grumpy face on and I'm just eating spinach, <laughs> but it's good. It's good news to start off the day. Yeah. Also another good news. I'm drinking guayaki, herba mate this morning. I actually got a couple of my friends hooked on it and they love it. I think you've got a lot of people hooked on it. I know. And guess what? I won't stop till I've got the whole world hooked on it. Dictate number one from Emperor Wee Sam. <laughs> exactly. Everyone drinks a Guayaki mate. only. And the cool thing about Guayaki, uh, this company, is that, that they help uh, restore parts of the Amazon rainforest. Neato. Yeah. So you get energized, you have a great drink to drink, and you're saving the rainforest. I mean, can you get any better than that? Win, no. win, win. Win. Nah, you can't. Oh boy, everybody have a good week. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Peyton, you're leaving for a little bit. I am. Yeah. Yep. And then we'll be back. I mean, the show is going to continue on. We'll be off July Fourth weekend. Just letting our listeners know. This but... will be after July Fourth weekend. Oh, this will be after so... it. Oh well, then you already knew that, <laughs> listeners. Welcome back. Well, shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, there it is. There, there it is. There it is. Um, I am. I'm excited to talk to our guest today. You might know her from DC Legends of Tomorrow, the Santa Clarita Diet, mm -hmm. and she's ac she actually has a uh, feature film that she's written called Roja Rises. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for Ramona Young. Do you DJ as well? <laughs> <laughs> you're you're an artist of many trades, though. I've I've noticed you you act, you write, you direct, and um, I just assumed you DJed. Mm. Yeah. No. No, that was done very professionally. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we were just talking about you're going on a cleanse, like a coffee cleanse, like no no caffeine, no energy drinks, or anything like that. Yeah, no, no caffeine. I'm, I don't even know what it's called. I'm just doing it because my friend is doing it and I wanted mm. to support her. But oh. it's like no, no caffeine, no dairy, no gluten, no sugar. Like it's crazy. I'm so yeah. tired right now. Yeah, no happiness. No so happiness. <laughs> I'm kidding. Pretty much. <laughs> no, I feel really good. It's like really good for your body, supposedly. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I feel like more awake. Like I'm slowly getting to a point where I don't need caffeine anymore, I think. Yeah. And like afterwards, I don't think I'm ever going back. I don't think I'm ever like drinking coffee again. Okay. That's great. Know. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Who knows? Who knows? If it makes you feel good, then that's the most important thing, right? Yeah. Because yeah. before like I needed coffee to like get the day started. Yeah. You know? I used to think the same way. I went on a uh, – I was. I started doing, especially this – like the beginning of 2018, water water fasting for just like a day. Oh, right. And then I would increase it to two days. And then the longest I've done is three days. Whoa. Just water. And I, I'm telling you, and I work out. I go running with, uh, while I'm fasting. And you would think like, oh, you don't have energy or anything. No. Feel great. How long can you do that for? I've done it for three days and honestly – it's not like at the third day, I mean, I'm hungry at times. Yeah. But like, it's not like I need food or I'm going to die. It's never that feeling. Can't you go, how, can't you go like, um, what is it, like a week without food or like a, a month? Yeah, a like month a month. without food? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's a long time. That is a long time. But with water, it's like three days. Yeah. And then you're dead. Yeah. Yeah. In the desert. Oh, man. That'd be the worst way to die. One of the worst ways to die, I think. Yeah. I can't even imagine. Yeah. No. Do you have any fears like that? Of dying? Yeah. In like a horrible way. (laughs) I know that's so dark. I don't know. I feel comfortable asking you. I think that's okay. If you don't want to answer it, that's fine. I have a fear of um, tsunamis. Oh, I've never seen a tsunami in real life. Yeah. But, like, the videos of tsunamis freak me out. And I have nightmares of tsunamis. Like, Ooh. I, it's like a recurring nightmare where a tsunami's, like, about to, like, overtake me. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. You know what, Mr. Michael, if you don't mind, let's uh, look up on Google what does tsunami in dreams mean. Oh, no. I, this is I I I'm in I'm interested. Me too. Okay, yeah. let's find out. Let's find this. We're going on a journey. Yeah. 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 Also, apparently, this computer only searches with Yahoo, not Google. But uh, what what what? Yeah, yeah, it's been doing that for a while. Oh well, I guess Google does not like us for some reason. Um, I'm. You know what? Recurring dreams are always fascinating <clears throat> to me. So, uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know how legit this is, but it's uh, okay. from a website called dreammeaning.net. Okay. Let's see it. Uh, it says, tsunami tidal wave dream interpretation. To see and dream about a tidal wave or tsunami is a powerful symbol. Uh, remember to take note of the size of the tidal wave, the location of the tsunami, the people that you were with, as well as the aftermath, if possible. They can all give clues and context as to why you're dreaming about the tsunami tidal wave. Uh, it represents repressed oh. feelings and emotions. Oh. Seeing or observing a tidal wave without being in the situation means that you are experiencing unhappiness or emotional instability in a wa- in a waking life. Oh. That's very me. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're like spot on. Very repressed. If it's if it's sudden or rising tidal wave means that some significant events have caused the tidal wave. It okay. was an event not expected before, like an earthquake. The earthquake may not even directly impact you, but the underlying emotions has affected you dearly. Okay. Interesting. Cool. Yeah, well, there you go. A little bit of insight. That's great. Yeah. Thanks. You know what's interesting to me? What? There's even I, more, too. It's like <laughs> that, running. Yeah, that's running. Right. <laughs> we'll, we'll stop there. We'll stop there. Pages. It's 20 pages. <laughs> um, I saw on your Instagram. Yeah. There's a lot of beach photos. Yeah. Yeah. But you don't, you're, not, you're not scared at the beach. Just tsunamis, man. Just tsunamis, yeah. Just tsunamis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very, interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. Which which what which is your favorite beach in LA to go to? Um, I I like Santa Monica, oh. but at night. With less people or just the way that the ocean is at night? Both. Mm. There's less people and it just feels a little magical mm. when it's like dark. Yeah. And you just look out and you're like, whoa, I can go out forever. Yeah. Yeah. I remember the first time I experienced that. It's a, it's a little eerie feeling. A little bit. Yeah. It's kind of adventurous. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Get that feeling like right here. Yeah. Yeah. I get that feeling too. Cool. Yeah. So it's, it makes me feel a little bit small too. Yeah. Yeah. I like feeling small. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why? Because it's there's like so many possibilities when you feel small. <laughs> I don't know. That's like the world yes. so big. That is very true. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you play video games? Um, a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. Okay. I get that feeling sometimes when I play certain video games. You feel small. Yeah. Which ones? Uh, Shadow of the Colossus. Okay, I haven't played that one. Yeah. What's it about? <sighs> Great question. Uh, it's first of all, it's not like any other game you've ever played. You yeah. kind of start off, and there's this. You're, you're a guy, uh, you're a young man. You have a sword and a horse, and there's this who you who I you assume is like your loved one on this altar, and mm-hmm. you've taken her into this like epic looking land, mm-hmm. and then. You hear this like voice telling you to find the these colossus creatures and kill them, but you don't get any hints on how to do it, hmm. and you're just put up in this open get, world. You, hmm. you, it's, it doesn't tell you how to do anything or anything, and so you have to slowly start finding out that your sword, when you put it up to the sun, it'll point you in the right direction to go. Whoa. But you you only find that after like 
it took me like literally maybe like three hours of gameplay before I found that. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. So it's like an, like you're solving these puzzle pieces yeah. as you go. And and because of how big the map is, right. you get that small feeling. Is it stressful at all? Like trying to figure out what to even do in the game? No, because it, it just, there's so much to explore. It's not stressful. Mm. It's, again, adventurous, you know, like exciting almost. The only stressful part is when you get like a, a Colossus thing. I feel like such a nerd talking about this right now. It's cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> there, there are 16 of them up here. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, you're like, you're you're this small. And those oh, are the things you find. Oh, that looks so cool. Yeah. Whoa. You did do uh, some voiceover for Red Dead Redemption 2, I saw. I did. Yeah, that's cool. Wow. Yeah. Did you ever play the game and hear your no. voice? Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't even know I was doing voiceovers for that game because, like, because I did it like so far in advance, mm. like before the game came out, that I wasn't even aware until after the game came out. I oh, was wow. like, "Oh, I worked on that." Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. I I've played that game, so yeah, that's why I was yeah, curious yeah. if you remember what you said it's or a what you did. Popular game. Yeah, very popular. Mm -hmm. I don't play online though. People, okay. Yeah. Why not? People are too competitive. Okay. They're too good. It's yeah. not enjoyable to me. Yeah, I don't like that. That's not a good vibe to have. No, everybody's way too good. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like just playing campaign mode. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Good talk, Ramona. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good talk. Um, are you still working on DC Legends of Tomorrow? Yeah. That's great. Does it, shoot, it shoots here in LA? No, it shoots in uh, Vancouver. In okay, Canada. cool. Yeah. You like Vancouver? I love Vancouver. My dad is from Vancouver. He lives there. Oh, cool. So when I'm up there, I get to hang out with him a lot. That's awesome. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Do you do any of like the nature stuff up there? Because I, I, I've seen pictures of it. It looks oh, paradise. Lots of hikes for sure. Um, I don't remember a lot of the names of stuff, but mm. yeah, lots of nature stuff. I plan on going up there this summer and doing some camping. So. Oh, great. Yeah. Do you do a lot of camping? Uh, I'm starting to. Oh, cool. Yeah, I want to, like, travel more and do more stuff, so. That's wonderful. Yeah. What what parts of the world would you like to travel to? If you had, let's say, unlimited budget. Mm. Uh, I really want to go to Africa. Oh, okay. Yeah. Why? Why, why? Uh, just the the nature. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The animals as well. Animals, yeah. totally. I want to visit the Amazon. Okay. Yeah. I'm just worried the mosquitoes. That's what I'm worried about too. Like, there's so many dangers that lurk in the Amazon. That is, that is a fact. That is true. I I get I get more. I'm I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Like the diseases. I'm more like the annoyance of how many there are. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's true. It's a lot. But you could like wear bug spray. I've heard from people that rarely works. They're really? like they're like intense mosquitoes. They're like gangster mosquitoes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, how much more shooting do you have for DC Legends of Tomorrow? Uh, uh what do you mean? How much? Uh, like, uh, are you are you guys uh like how many episodes in? Are you oh, for we're, shooting? Oh, we're just starting. Like, oh, okay. Like, not even, we haven't even started our new season yet. We're just coming around oh, to okay. start. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, okay. Season five, yeah. That's great. Yeah. And um, you've written and directed and produced before uh, on a short, was it a short film I saw? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, <laughs> I've written and produced and acted in a couple. Yeah, that's awesome. What what pulled you towards that uh, that cross discipline with uh, the filmmaking and everything? I don't know. Maybe just like curiosity. Mm. Yeah, but mm. I really like it. I like making my own stuff. Yeah, you like having that control over the story, or just yeah, I'm a control freak. Yeah, yeah, totally. Maybe a little bit, but then I'm, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. I think it's good to be a little bit of a control freak. Yeah. yeah. It's like I can be, but then I can also not be. Okay. I don't know. Well balanced. Yeah. 
You a Libra? No. No? Okay. Why are you? Yeah, just because of the scales. That's the only reason. I'm not. Let me, can I guess your birthday? Yeah. October? Yeah. Third? Yeah. <laughs> but did you just look that up? I don't know. That's pretty, I just guessed. That's pretty prevalent information. <laughs> you look like an October 3rd. Well, <laughs> if that was really a guess, I'm pretty amazed. That was a guess. That's impressive. You wouldn't lie to me? No. I believe it. Okay. Her. I believe her. All right. I believe her. All right. <laughs> that's impressive. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you? I just guessed. Oh, my God. Okay. That's a pretty amazing guess. I can't tell. I can't tell. Um, no, that's – wow. That's imp- Are you really good at that? Is that like your party trick? No. No. Okay. <laughs> I just <laughs> randomly <Anybody> guessed. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um uh, Roja rising, right? Rises. Rises. I keep saying rising. Uh, what's what's that about? This is your new feature length, right? That you yeah. Wrote? Yeah. This is like my first feature that I wrote. Wow. And it's a it's a western, but there's an Asian female lead for it. Ooh. And it's a very cool, very adventurous, um, kind of like John Wick, Indiana Jones slash spaghetti western. Oh wow! Mixed together, yeah. That's awesome. Thank you. What uh, what inspired that the idea for a western? Uh, well, I loved watching like spaghetti westerns, mm-hmm. um, like Once Upon a Time in the West and stuff like that. And I was pretty bummed out, like figuring out as an actress, like I'm never gonna really have that opportunity per se. Mm-hmm. But then, like, I looked into history, and I was just like. You know, Asian people, Chinese people were all up in that joint. We were all in, like, the Wild West, like, building railroads and doing the gold rush. And so I was just like, we were totally there. Like, it's totally prevalent to have a character be in that time period. Yeah. Yeah. And so I just wrote a feature based off of that. That's awesome. That's that's really cool. Uh, Did you read any... Uh, do you have any writing books that you kind of use as a resource? Um, resource for research for the- uh, not not so much research, but like uh, like uh, for screenwriting. Oh, um, yeah, there are. I've read story by Robert McKee. Yeah, and then I read like the screenwriter's Bible. I read Save the. Ca- I've read like a bunch of stuff. Oh, awesome! Yeah. yeah. Anyone you would recommend for first-time screenwriters? The best thing I could recommend is to read screenplays. Mm. Not like how-to books, but just read a lot of samples of screenplays, and yeah. then you'll totally get the gist of it. Yeah. I I agree with, with you on that one. Cool. <laughs> That's what I did. Yeah. So. Because yeah. for acting... I was lucky enough to have like good reps who would always send me out on stuff. And mm-hmm. so I was able to read a lot of scripts. Yeah. And then you start being able to distinguish <laughs> like okay scripts from like the really good ones. Totally. And you're like, oh, why is this one really good? Oh, because the first five pages just grab your attention right away. And then as time has progressed, immediately I'm like, wait a minute. This part of the script doesn't seem to work because there's no reason for me to care for this character. Why do I care about them? Mm-hmm. And that's, that's also another thing I, I like about storytelling. Whenever, uh, whenever the storytellers can make you care about a character that maybe you shouldn't necessarily care about. Yeah. Maybe they're a bad guy, but you still like feel for them. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's really great. Yeah. Have you seen you on Netflix? Um. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The pilot does that. I think it's a great pilot. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. you shouldn't care for him, but you do. He's like this stalker guy. and Yeah, why is that? Why do we care about him? Like, he's just so, like, likable. Yeah. I think it's, you know what it is for me? What? It's the first, it's the, uh, after you see him talking with the girl and stuff like that, yeah. and you're like, uh, we kind of understand where he's coming from. We don't agree with it. But then the next scene is he gives his sandwich to the kid in the stairway. Oh. Oh, yeah. And then you see that he doesn't have any food in his refrigerator. So you're like, oh, he's actually like, oh, there's actually some. You're so right. That's such a pivotal scene. You're so right. Yeah. Thank you. 
<laughs> Thank you. I am so right. Will, will that be the quote for the episode? <laughs> okay. um, that's wonderful. And are you currently on like certain drafts for this uh, script or is this like something that you're you're sending out and hoping that it gets, you know, produced? Um, it's done, done for now. I'm hoping it gets produced. In the meantime, I'm kind of working on pre-production on my own. Oh. Because I feel like you have to be responsible for your own projects. You can't just write something and be like, well, I hope I get lucky. Right. You have to, like, push it. You have to be accountable for your stuff if you want to make it happen. Absolutely. So I'm just working on that, like, on my own and with my team and with my friends and stuff, and I'm having a good time. That's awesome. That's actually some great advice because I think people just expect, you know, yeah. it to fall into their laps or somebody else will do all the work for them. I think people try to catch a break. They're like, I've worked so hard. Now I get to catch my break. Like, when's my big break? And, like, the truth is, like, there's no break. Like, you just keep going, and this is the lifestyle that we've chosen for ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Preach. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Accountability. Is, is something that's missing from a lot of artists nowadays, especially actors. Why Why do you say that? Oh, I just... From I what mean, you, I don't disagree, but... Yeah, no, I, I, I sense it from social media, from what mm-hmm, people are mm-hmm, posting, mm-hmm. from what I've, I, I've heard other people talk about their experiences with, like, certain friends of theirs or certain yeah. colleagues on set. I, I, I've heard it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and it doesn't get you anywhere. It just creates this, like, negative cloud around you. Yeah. There's a lot of, um, I think we just live in, like, a generation of, like, instant gratification where Mm -hmm. we, like, expect things and we forget that life's, like, a marathon and it's just a process. Exactly. Sorry, I I literally talk about that all the time. How I imagine life being an ultra marathon. Yeah. You're just running forever. Huh. Cool. You hit certain peaks (laughs) and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes the, it's like a grassy field. It's beautiful, a little shady out to run. Sometimes you're in mud. Sometimes yeah. you're in desert. Yeah. Thinking you're going to die of dehydration. Yeah, totally. Full circle. There you yeah. go, Ramona. Cool. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, that's, re- that's really cool. Um, any other acting projects you're currently working on other than DC Legends of Tomorrow? Nope, just Legends of Tomorrow and producing my own stuff, and that's about it for yeah. now. Any Go other hobbies? Going out for auditions and stuff. Yeah. Any other hobbies you like you like doing? Uh, I do a little jujitsu. I started awesome. jujitsu like two months ago, and I'm really liking it. Yeah. Yeah. Where do you go? Uh, I go to this place called Lionheart. Mm-hmm. It's um, it's awesome. I'm learning like a lot about life through doing something else. You know what I mean? Hundred percent. Yeah. Hundred percent. There's a great book called The Book of Five Rings. Okay. By Miyamoto Musashi. Uh-huh. And he was a samurai who lived back in the samurai time period. And he had over 60 life and death duels. And he won all of them. Whoa. And so he went into the woods and wrote a book about why he was so good at what he did. And in a certain chapter of this book, it's like super small read, but it's great. He talks about exactly what you're, you're saying. You learn... So much it, when, when, like, you're really good at something, learn, like, pottery, learn painting, learn something else, learn, like, wood shop working, and you'll start noticing similarities in everything. And those so similarities true. can be parallel to life. So true. So that's great that you're experiencing that. What is that book called? Book of Five Rings. Book of Five Rings. I'm going to go check that out. Yeah. Yeah, highly. There it is. Yeah. I, I think he, he won his first duel at 13 years old. Wow. Yeah. Complete badass. So weird that that's actually a real person that, like, lived that life. Yeah. 60, like, life or death battles. That's insane. Yeah. And he was very clever, too. Like, one of my favorite stories about him (laughs) is he was was, uh, set to duel this other samurai at a certain time. Mm -hmm. And he purposely showed up super late. Mm-hmm. And on his way there, he he was not on his way, but before he arrived, he was carving out of like a paddle, like like a paddle of a boat. You know how it's made of wood. Mm-hmm. He was just like making it more blunt, like more of a blunt 
hitting instrument. So he shows up super late, super disrespectful to this other samurai, and the other samurai is fuming, right? Yeah. Like, you're disrespecting me, and now you show up to this battle without even a sword. You're just showing up with a stick. So he gets his emotions all riled up. He can't think properly, and he just beats him to death with, with the wooden stick. He's able to, like, beat him Whoa. that way by getting him riled up. Whoa. So he used his own emotions against him, you know? He wasn't, That's, yeah. yeah. But showing up late, though... Oh my gosh, I would be so upset if that yeah. happened. <laughs> yeah, because it's a life and death duel. Yeah. And you're just like, well, this guy's going to show up, <laughs> you know, hours late. I would be so bad. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. cool. And he fought with two swords as opposed to like one. Wow. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, just a little. It's cheating. It's not cheating. It's cheating. No, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> Payton's so upset by this. <laughs> um, yeah. Do you any books you're reading right now? <laughs> I'm reading this book called "The Courage to Be Disliked." <laughs> oh, okay. I like that title. Um, <laughs> it has. I'm reading it right now, and uh, it has. It has um, a setup where it's basically the whole book is a conversation between a student and a philosopher, and they just debate back and forth. So that's the whole book. Oh. Um, it's pretty interesting. So it's like an interview. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. It reminds me, of, like, is it like where it says, like, student? Yeah. Colon. And yeah. Then it'll, oh, mm-hmm. wow. Like, almost like a script. Yeah, exactly. So it's just that and they basically like philosophize about um philosophize about like being happy with mm. like who you are and what you have yeah. yeah that's missing a lot nowadays too being happy with what you have people are always wanting it's hard i mean i feel that like i'm super ambitious and i feel like half the time if i were happy with what i had i wouldn't be as ambitious Mm. so it's like how do we find that balance between getting what we want and also being happy with what we have yeah it's a constant struggle for me yeah yeah Yeah. i just experienced it recently how so with acting like yeah. a role I was about to like really close in getting. Totally. Uh-huh. And I try to thank God for the things I don't get as well. Yeah. You know? But it's hard for me because like if I want to take care of my family financially, I need that job. Yeah. And so totally. it's hard for me just to be like completely, ah, that's okay. You know what I mean? Because I there's a part of me that's for some reason I've I, I've isolated it that says Oh, if you don't feel upset, that means you didn't care about it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's not the issue because I, I care about every single audition I go out on. Yeah. How do you practice or is there anything you do to practice that to make you appreciative of what you have? Because like for me, yeah, I'll, I'll whenever I start getting in that negative thought process, I'll just start listing the things I have in life currently and that I'm thankful for and that'll – take that negative feeling away because I realize I have so many good things in my life compared to other people. That's really helpful. Like Mm. having a, what is it called? A gratitude list or something? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, uh, like with roles and stuff, I mean, obviously like we go out a lot and 99% of the time we don't get what we audition for. Right. Yeah. And I don't know, like I, I've been getting in this feeling like if you don't get it, it means that it wasn't meant to be yours to like begin with. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, why get upset about something that's never meant to be yours? It's like it's yeah. like falling in love with someone, but they don't love you back. It's just like, what's the point of, I don't know. Yeah, that's a good know. perspective to have. It's hard to adopt that perspective, though, for sure. It really is. Yeah, it's not easy, yeah. especially with being in the age of instant gratification, seeing on social media everybody's good times. Mm-hmm. Nobody's posting, but their anxiety. Yeah, <laughs> everyone has anxiety. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I felt it creep up on me yesterday. Me too. Y- y- Last y- night? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Me too. I shut that shit down, though. Oh, good for you. Yeah. 
Yeah. How would yeah. you do it? Uh, I just worked the shit out of a script. Mm. Yeah. That's so cool. Like yeah. channeling it. Yeah, kind of. Cool. They're like, yeah, you don't want to hire me for this? Well, watch this. Yeah, totally. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm just talking to myself like a crazy person. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we got to take a quick break, okay. but when we come back, we'll talk about more cool stuff with you, if that's cool. Of and course. then current events. Yeah. Yeah. And then maybe about your awesome sweater. Sweet. Yeah. Great. All right. We'll be right back, guys. Ramona. Mm-hmm. If one would love to uh, purchase a sweater similar to yours, where, where would they go? I, um, I've been eyeballing this sweater for three years. <laughs> and what? <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard anybody say that ever before. <laughs> For three years? Yeah. Wow, that's a long time. It's, this sweater has been sold out for three years. Oh, okay. Wow. And <laughs> Sorry, I just imagined you walking by a department store, and it's like in the window, and you're just like, <laughs> someday. And you just, like every single day. Well, no, I mean, kind of. Like yeah. I see it, and I'm like, I wish I could get that, but it's sold out. <laughs> When did you so so I recently found it on eBay and oh. I'm like now it's mine. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. What what do you like about the Hello Kitty? You're a big Hello Kitty fan. I I like that they mixed that they collaborated Simpsons with Hello Kitty. Oh yeah, it's Bart. It's yeah, Bart Simpson. I just realized that. That's pretty cool. Isn't that great? Yeah, that's a it's cool mashup. So cool. Cool. Yeah. I like it. I like the colors. It's warm. It's comfy. Yeah. Makes you feel small. <laughs> it does. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, Mr. Michael. Yes, sir. What do we have in uh, current events going on? Um, we have a few different things. Great. Um, first off is a, uh, a zombie snake in North Carolina that can play dead. Ooh. Scary. Roll over and play dead. Whoa. Wow. Apparently, it's not a very dangerous snake, and people people are still, like, really afraid of it. And they actually had to clarify that it plays dead, and it does not die and come back to life like a zombie. Interesting. Okay. That's a beta snake, if I've ever <laughs> seen one in my life. There it is. There it is, on its belly. Not aggressive, rarely bite people. You snake fan? I don't mind snakes. I think snakes are pretty cool, actually. Yeah. 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 Did, are you a fan of snakes? Yeah, I'm. I'm like indifferent. I'm like, uh, okay, okay, that's a, that's a cool snake. I've yeah. never seen one play dead before, though. That's yeah. that's brilliant. Dude, anacondas? No joke. Yeah. Those are huge. Yeah. D if the, one one of those thirty feet one wrap around you, yeah. Dunzo. Yeah, jujitsu will not help you with that. No, ma'am. No. No, they 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 are black belts at jujitsu. They are. They're like the masters of jujitsu. Anacondas are the masters of jujitsu. They are. <laughs> wow. I don't think anybody's ever said that in the English language before. I I don't know. Well, we just said it. Well, uh, there you go. <laughs> Memories. <laughs> Michael, what else we got? Um. So this week in sports, okay. um, but it's not necessarily just a sports uh, story, but um, the St. Louis Blues won, finally won the Stanley Cup. They yeah. were, were kind of like the, the Cubs of the NHL. They hadn't won in, since their inception back in, I think, 1967. Yeah. Wow. But what was nice about this is that there was this little girl, she was 11, uh, named Layla Anderson. She has like a really life-threatening blood disorder, but she's a really big blues fan. And so she's been going through chemotherapy and like home confinement. Um, but, you know, they invited her to the games because they thought that she was the kind of like a good luck charm. Oh. And so they even invited her to go to game seven, which was in Boston. And they allowed her to travel to Boston to be at the game and here she is holding up the Stanley Cup. That's awesome. So. Aw. Nice, nice heartwarming story. Very heartwarming. You know, <laughs> um, no, it, it is heartwarming. <laughs> but it reminded me of, uh, you know, how people get really excited whenever their, their sports teams wins. Yeah. And I, you know what, I get it to a certain extent. Yeah. But I don't get it 
whenever people like Drake mm-hmm. start doing post <laughs> game interviews. Wait, mm-hmm. he did a post game interview? Yeah, and ta- and like acting like he was like one of the players on there. Mm-hmm. That drives me insane. <laughs> <laughs> That's so ridiculous. Like you had nothing to do with with them winning. Yeah. Don't act like you're part of the team like that. While he yeah. was on the sidelines, he was really effective. Uh, getting in their heads. Uh, no, not really. Yeah. Are you a, are you a sports fan of anything like that to the extreme? Uh, no, not to the extreme. I'm pretty diplomatic about it. Although I do kind of like the Golden State Warriors. Yeah. Yeah. Any reason? Um, I kind of grew up in Monterey, so. Oh, nice. Yeah. It's a nice area. And Steph Curry's really cute, so. Okay, yeah. Yeah. He's all right. He's <laughs> super cute. He's all right. He's so good looking. Anyway. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, I guess going back to uh, some Game of Thrones stuff, but there's oh. a... Uh, there was a deep fake that just came out where it made Jon Snow apologize for season eight. So you guys know what deep fakes are, right? No. Oh, yeah. oh you That's don't know? A deep fake. Oh, man. I'm not going to show like the video, but basically the deep fake is that like it's a video that looks like he's talking. Yeah. Oh. It, but it looks... They, technology nowadays have made Earmuffs. it look... <laughs> have, oh, oh, yeah, Peyton, you need to leave. Wait. Yeah. Well, uh, the, the sound is still be out there, but yeah, I, I will hide. For a do, do you want to leave the, the <laughs> building? <laughs> so, for our listeners who don't know what's going on, Peyton hasn't uh, caught up with uh, Game of Thrones, so he doesn't know how it's ended. Have you caught up with it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, Peyton has not, so he's literally leaving the build. I see him outside of our building right now. He's being mugged. There's nothing <laughs> we can do. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> But anyway, so yeah, they're using technology to basically make it look like they're saying things that they're not actually saying. All right, let's see it. Oh, sorry. That's all right. I'm sorry we didn't learn anything from the ending of Lost. I have more lines in this video than I had in the last season. I'm sorry for that. And I know nothing made sense at the end when the Starbucks cup is the smallest mistake you know you fucked up. <laughs> we take the blame. That's pretty good. It's so good. I, I wrote this yeah. in like six days or something. Now, let's burn the script of season eight. I just forget it forever. Dang. Yeah, it's getting too real. It's getting way too real. It's becoming a real serious issue. Yeah. But if I saw this, it looks like... Legit. I mean, it looks legit. Like, the quality of it looks legit, but it doesn't look like it's a part of the show. Yeah. But if you listen to... Uh, there's one with Joe Rogan. You know Joe Rogan? Yeah, 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 of course. So he's done... It's just audio. It's no video. Yeah. But they did a audio deep fake of him, oh. and the whole thing is made up. But it sounds exactly like something he would say. Yeah. They and also did one with uh, Obama, with Jordan Peele doing the Obama voice. Oh my gosh! See, Apparently, it it, it's going to be a problem, and then he, it's already a problem with, unfortunately, like female and male uh, actors. They put their faces on or pornographic films. Right. Which right. Are enemy- Here we Wait. go. This is the Obama one. These can make it look like anyone is saying anything at any point in time, even if they would never say those things. It's bonkers, so, right? So wild. They're, they're trying to pass a law right now in um, in California to ban deep fake uh, pornography as well, which I think, yeah, absolutely. If it's getting that real, like, yeah, 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 yeah it's no, it's no bueno. It's becoming a really serious problem, especially yeah. with how 2016 the election went. Yeah. So. Wow. Yeah. You know, uh, pretty crazy. Um, anything else? Uh, there's this one. Last one uh, okay. about a, a valedictorian who rips the school staff uh, and calls uh-huh. out teacher for alcoholism in her graduation speech. Dang. Yeah, I saw it. It's uh, kudos for her. I mean, she is valedictorian, so she's not like some just random student. But she one one excerpt is uh, to my counselor. Thank you for letting me fend for myself. You were always unavailable. You expressed your, to me your joy in having one of your students be valedictorian when you have it absolutely no role in my achievements. Yeah. Ouch. Yeah. 
Did you go to uh, this is kind of random, but did you go to college for acting as well? I did. Yeah, where at? Uh, I went to several colleges. I went to East LA College. I went to CSU LA. Okay. Good programs. Mm, yeah. 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 Pretty good, I have to say. I mean, I don't have anything else to compare it to, but okay. Yeah. That's great. You do any acting classes in town? Uh, I went to, I've, I've been to like all the classes, like I've mm. bounced around trying to like find my home, but like right now I'm more so doing like, um, like just coaching with like my friends and stuff. That's awesome. Yeah. I think that's important. What about you? Do you take classes? Do you train anywhere? Uh, kind of like you. I jumped around a lot in the beginning, mm-hmm. but for the last couple of years or so now, I'm more than a couple of years actually. I've been doing a Sunday morning class with my uh, best friend and colleague, Isaiah Adams. Mm. And we give each other, it started off, we just give each other cold scenes, cold reading scenes, and we just run them over and over and over again. Yeah. And then sometimes we do self-tapes, sometimes we do um, prepared pieces, but every every Sunday morning. That's great. Yeah, and it's actually helped us tremendously in the room. Yeah. Because we'll try scenes in ways that they're not even meant to be re- done, just to try it. Yeah. Even if the character's like super nice, we'll be like, oh, we'll make him an asshole in this take. Yeah. And we'll be like, cool. And then we notice that whenever we're like in a producer session and they tell us, hey, would you mind doing it this way? We're like, oh yeah. Cause we're so used to just doing it every other way. So yeah. Right. How's, how does your sessions work? Um, basically it's just conversations. I like, mm. I just talk with the person and and it's weird. I don't know how to describe it. Like, oh. um, it's more like a therapy session more than anything. But yeah. I'm just like, oh, like I feel like this way about my acting. And my coach, who used to be my teacher, would be like, oh, well, it kind of sounds like you want to work on your vulnerability. And I'm like, yeah, that's what I want to work on. I want to be more vulnerable as an actor. And then I'll we'll work on it. Very cool. <laughs> That's a cool twist on it. That's 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 we'll nice. We'll just talk it out. Yeah. You find positive results from doing that? Yeah. Mm. Absolutely. That's great. I think you need a good sense of awareness before actors start doing stuff like that. Mhm. You, you you really need to have a be honest with yourself too. Yeah. I mean, you can like feel, you know, like something not working. You yeah. might not be able to like put your finger on it, but yeah. But if someone else is there, they can help you point it out. Yeah. Me and Isaiah, we just ask each other questions. Mm-hmm. That's how we give direction. Yeah. We never tell him, like, maybe you should do this way or this way. Right. We're, we're usually like, hey, what did you mean by this line? Or, like, what are you feeling here? Yeah. That's oh, some th- uh, uh, sharing uh, from actor to actor. We've been uh, adding a new element to our self-tapes and our audition pieces. We're trying to find the most engaging choice to make Mm -hmm. because we realize like performances and what we do is not masturbatory it's for an audience member right Mm -hmm. so we want to figure out what's the most interesting choice that still fits within the construct of the story to make so that audience members are most engaged or the producer who's watching it is most engaged or the casting director and that we've been finding a lot of positive result that way too okay yeah Hmm. like stretching our minds into figuring out what's another way i could do this what's yeah, it's it's been like, fun. Like a way to do it that kind of di- like separates you from other people, like other choices that are obvious. Is yes. That what you mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But s- that still makes sense right. because you could do anything to make yourself yeah. stand out. But it, it, if it doesn't make sense, people are like, "What are you doing?" Okay. Yeah. So that's been fun trying to stretch ourselves in that way, and and it's been helpful. Yes, yeah. and he's actually. Uh, been booking and getting wow. close with his uh, self tapes too. That's good. Yeah. So anyway, just share, just That's sharing. Great. Yeah. Ideas with other actors who do that. That's cool to hear that another actor doing that with, like friends and stuff like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Because we have our coffee beforehand and we talk about life and everything. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Do you ever feel yourself unmotivated to do acting work? Uh. Like for an audition or something? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. How do you get over that? 
You either, I either work on my own things. Mm -hmm. I mean, it depends. Are you talking about feeling unmotivated for a particular audition or are you talking about unmotivated like as an artist? Oh, uh, I was thinking more as audition, but unmotivated as an artist, maybe that could be a part two to that question. For, for auditions that I really don't feel unmotivated about, that I don't feel right, I, um, I don't go to them. Oh, wow. I, I say I'll pass. If wow. I don't feel like I can offer anything, if it doesn't, like, inspire anything. Oh. Because your energy is valuable and your time is valuable, and if you feel unmotivated about it, if you can't get yourself motivated about it, your self-tape's going to suck. Fair. You know, so it's just, like, why, why waste your time? Why waste their time if it's not right? I, I think that's totally true. How, how does one deal with that? Because like you've had you, – you're, you're a working actor. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And maybe w your reps, I assume, are cool with that and they mm -hmm. agree with you. What would you say to people who though maybe haven't had a lot of credits or have no credits and they feel that way towards their audition? How do you overcome that? Because like sometimes, you know, you know, when you're starting off as an actor, you just want to book anything, you know, just to have something on there. Well – I mean, but that's motivation if you just want to book something. Mm. I mean, it's kind of weird to want to book something but not want to audition. Yeah. You know? But, uh, I mean, if it's something that you're, like, morally against or something, mm -hmm. like, I would say no to that. Gotcha. Yeah. What about unmotivated as an artist? Um, I like to... I like to not focus on acting and live my life a little and then it makes me bounce back mm. that helps what about what about yourself same yeah that's why i have a lot of hobbies yeah totally yeah. i like watching document oh i just got excited because I, I i this is something i forgot i want to talk about and i think you'll appreciate this okay it gives you that small feeling okay it, that's what it does for me okay i go to youtube and i was searching and for some reason, I was like, oh, slums of India. I want to see how, like, really, really, like, like poor people live, like, uh, you know, in the slums. And then I found this account where this guy just was walking, and he just videotapes himself walking through, like, parts of India, parts of Russia. And in the ones in India, he's, like, walking through these crazy underground seedy areas, and he's trying to talk with people. He knows a little bit of Hindi, but not much. Oh, dude. I'm telling you, I've, I've watched hours of this guy. Wow. And I feel like I'm there with him traveling to these parts of the world. That's I like cool. doing that nowadays. Does it motivate you to want to travel? Not to those areas, no. No? No, okay. no. But to, I, I want to go back to Japan for sure. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. I've never gone to Japan, but I would love to do that as well. My favorite all-time place. Cool. Have you been to um, any of the islands in Japan, like the bunny islands and the cat islands and the? No. What is that? What? <laughs> like the bunny islands and the cat. I so they have like these little islands in Japan, where like you show up and it's just like thousands of bunnies running around, what? and you can just feed them. Or and there's like a fox island where it's just like thousands of foxes what? and. Uh, go there. <clears throat> and it's just like what you do. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Uh I gotta tell Josh or Isaiah and uh Jonte about this. Dude, can you imagine Jonte? So <laughs> okay. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. This is Jonte. <laughs> yeah, just more arms flailing. <laughs> So my buddy, uh, my buddies and I, two best friends, yeah. we went to Japan together. We did yeah. a guy's trip there. So we went to Tokyo most of the time. Then we went to Kyoto. And then we went to Nara. You know about Nara? The deer? You get to feed the deer. There's deer everywhere. It's like okay. that, but with deer. Okay. My friend Jante is a little scared of animals. Aww. And Yeah. Um, and it was, it was a wonderful experience watching him interact with these animals. <laughs> so the next time we go... We're definitely going to Bunny yeah. Island, Fox I Fox Island sounds a little dangerous, but I like it. Yeah. Uh, and what was the other one? Um, cats. Cats Island. Oh, that's not that. Oh, maybe not Cat Island. Why not? What? Here they are. Yeah. I mean, you can. I mean, that's that's uh, it's a, it's a cat. It, I like. I have two cats. Yeah. But I'd rather go to Bunny Island or Fox. <laughs> oh my goodness. That is amazing. Isn't it so cool? 
I like their sound statement. They're like, <laughs> you can feed them for less than a dollar. Dude. All right. Well, know where I'm going next time. Yay. Yeah. Uh, no, the, I, I, yeah, I, I can't wait to go back. I miss the onsen in Kyoto. Oh, okay. What's that? Uh, hot springs, like a bathhouse. Oh, do you have tattoos? No. So oh, I'm good. Okay. Yeah. You have tattoos? Yeah. I wanted to go, but I heard that you can't go if you have tattoos. Get one of those swims. Where, where's your tattoo? Uh, I have one on my leg and one, like, on my ribs. Here's what you do. Yeah. Get one of those swimsuits. Yeah. That, like, the old-timey swimsuits, you know what I'm yeah. talking about? Yeah, get one of those. You'll be fine. Really? Oh, wait, you have to be naked in there. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it won't work. Never mind. Aww. Yeah. Okay. I just realized this. Sorry. <laughs> Got, got, yeah. her, got her hopes up, man. I, I did. I did. I am so sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> then I'm not going to talk about the onsen. Okay. It's, you're not missing much. Uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. That's okay, though. Um, I'm No, there are onsens in t- uh, Tokyo, though, that if you have tattoos, it doesn't matter. Okay, cool. So you can still experience those. Yes. Yeah. Can't wait. I, I'm trying to think where else I would want to. I would want to travel to. What's this guy doing? Oh, sorry. This guy looks sketch in the front. I didn't know what was going on. Um, sometimes I get distracted like that. You know? Yeah, totally. Do, is, Especially do you, from like your point of view. Yeah, I'm trying to get uh, curtains put in here. Oh, okay. Yeah, a little bit of a glare, you know. But the, you get crazies sometimes who walk in. You gotta, you know, stop the show and deal with them. Yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> Has that ever happened? Once. Once, I think that's happened. Somebody's tried to open it. Anyway, um, do you get uh, easily distracted sometimes? Yes. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, how long have you been living in L.A.? Doing like, acting? Like eight years. Yeah? Yeah. You dig it? Uh... L.A., I don't know. It feels a little, like, too much. Mm. But I'm here, like, chasing the dream, you know? Yeah. So You're living the dream. Yeah. Both. Chasing and living the dream. Yeah. Ultra yeah. marathoning that dream, that's yeah, for sure. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> um, if people want to check out uh, this short film you did, is it on, like, iTunes or can they buy it off Amazon? It's actually um, not public right now because oh, okay. I'm submitting it for festivals. Oh, awesome. Great. Yeah. And if people want to check up on that, they can always follow you on Instagram? Yes. And uh, it's what, what's, what's your Instagram handle? It's at Ramona Bish Young. Bish? Is that your middle name? Yep. That's, that's cool. what, is that, what does that mean? Nope. You know, Bish. <laughs> <laughs> is, wait, that's not your middle name? That's my middle name. Oh, what does it mean? Uh, Abish. Abish, that's my middle name. Abish. Abish? Yeah, Abish. Okay. That's yeah. my middle name. I can't read you, Ramona. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't know if you're joking with me or if you're serious. I don't know why. I get that a lot. Yeah. I'm really serious. Yeah. All the time. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh! Honestly, I couldn't tell just because there, there there's like an urban dictionary. Like yeah. For, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, um, <laughs> no, I believe you. I'm gonna. T- I'm not making fun of your name. I just wanted to. Ma- yeah. No, I think it's cool. It is. Cool. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! This has been a very fun interview. It's been different. Yeah, it's been a good time. Yeah, you have a you have a very interesting and engaging cadence. Thank you. You too. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we definitely need to have you back on here whenever you want to promote your next project. And um, but you're gonna you're going up to Vancouver for a while for yeah. shooting. Yeah. yeah. How long approximately? Usually. Uh, usually it's for about half a year, but I'll be back and forth. You'll be back and forth. All right. Yeah. Well, definitely keep in touch. Um, uh, Peyton, how much time do we have left on that camera? We got six minutes. Oh, six minutes. Great. Uh, before we end, mm-hmm. um, what's some of the best piece of advice you've ever gotten in your life? I, I l- always love to end that uh, with our interviews. It could be on uh, life, on acting, 
uh, on anxiety, how to deal with anxiety and stuff like that? I think I heard from someone. He was a singer. It was either like The Cure or The Smiths or I think it was The Smiths. And he was doing like a concert or something. And it was like a recording that I heard. And he was just like, time answers everything. And Ooh. it's so true. Because like you have anxiety, you don't know what's going to happen. Just wait. And then you'll find out. I dig that. Time answers everything. Yeah. It also heals. It does. It does. Preach. Word. Hashtag memories. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this has been so much fun um, you're welcome back anytime Ramona seriously thank you so much for coming on thank you yeah. it's been a pleasure absolutely uh, Michael would you like to play us out oh are you gonna DJ there we go <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you Adobe Radio thank you to all of our listeners our new subscribers our new followers Thank you to all the fans. We appreciate you and everything that you do for the show. Thank you, Michael. You're welcome, Wee Sam. Thank you, Peyton. You're welcome, Wee Sam. Safe travels. <laughs> Thank you, Ramona. Thank you. Thank you, Brandy. Brandy is the awesome publicist of Ramona and I. And uh, press relations, right? Yeah. Yeah. You should, if you need, if you need good PR... You, you email Brandy. Yeah. There's some free press for you. For press. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Guayaki. We love your drinks. We love that you save the rainforest as well. And we love that you energize us with caffeine. The good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, who else am I? Oh, Steph Jula. And uh, thank you... I'm trying to think of who else. Nice guy digital. That's about it. That's all we usually think, right? Yeah. Yeah. Always remember to listen, think, and then talk.